Good evening, good morning, and welcome to this episode of Market Watch episode three, baby. And uh, what is today? Today is uh, March 25th, and uh, we have a special episode going down today. In preparation of IMAX, this is going to be at the back of the bus, but um, today we're going to be going over a little Genesis shopping list. We're going to be doing it by tiers, commons, rares, epics, legendaries, going down by domain. We're going to start off today with death and then work our way down. So uh, yeah, strap in. Um, we're going to start off with transactions of the past 24 hours, see where the money goes, because where the money goes, we follow it. All right, y'all. So let's uh, let's have a good morning. You're watching Market Watch with Black Aston. All right. So uh, let's get right into the meat and potatoes. Oh, where am I? Boop. <laughs> right here. All right. So um, past 24 hours, what's been going on? Hey, yo, Zimba Pina, what's going on, baby? Welcome to uh, pulling up to Market Watch. You're just in the um, just in the nick of time, baby. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in on here so you guys can see. Yes, sir, just in time, just in time, baby. Okay, so we have some diamond commons popping off for the light domain. What is this, a little jackrabbit? Let's go ahead and take a peek. Jackrabbit, blessed jackalope. Heal each other creature for four. Oh, it's pretty valuable. Good value, how much did that go for? $96, quick little hundo piece. Not too bad. Someone's buying um, some core cards, wanted to drop eight cents, but said, okay, I'm gonna pay for the gas too. Wow. Ooh, look at what we got. Someone's popping off, getting ready for the weekend ranked. Someone just added this to the repertoire, a little Avatar of War, one of the strongest cards in the war domain. Definitely gonna be on the shopping list today. Uh, so what this does, let me zoom in real quick so y'all can read that. Avatar of War already has Leech. Roar equip a 5-2 Sentient Flame Blades with God Blitz. And after you attack, heal your God for 5. If that doesn't say value, I don't know what does. Looks like a Walmart shopping bag to me. So then we got 5 hours ago. hey oh, someone's buying some gold cards. Look at that, someone made a run. Let's go ahead and break this down for you guys right now. So it looks like they busted it down with the $800 purchase as the last purchase. What do they go ahead and buy? Four mana. Neutral God card. Legendary from the Genesis domain. Go ahead and shuffle a random box into your deck. Could be good. Could be bad depending on what box you get. It's Christmas, right? You don't know what you're going to open up. All right. And then next we have Odysseus. Tired Victor. Front line. Summon three 1-1 one, one injured soldiers with uh, front line. Odysseus takes six damage. So it's a uh, three... So it's pretty much going to be four 1-1 one, one bodies across the board. It's not the best. Every time I come across it, I'll wipe it. So we're not scared of your purchase, buddy. Go ahead and get the gold Mimicus at the end of your turn. While this creature is in your hand, transform it into a creature in your opponent's hand. It keeps this ability after the change. Huh. So you're sniping your opponent's card. They don't know you have it in hand, but you're just thumbing through, thumbing through their minions. Someone dropped 12 hundo on a gold avatar of nature. Okay, saw uh, Vervi getting um, 25 wins. Said, hey, let me add that on there and let me up the sheen too. At the end of your turn, go ahead and summon a 1-1 one, one walking plant. Not too bad, man. Go ahead and get the diamond copy of clone two mana epic. Copy the lowest creature in your hand. Not too bad. I've seen it pop off. We've done a couple crazy plays on our channel with it. So that was 1200 added another 1300 1400 for the gold Demogorgon. Nice. You all know what a Demogorgon does, but just in case you didn't know, let me go ahead and zoom in on that for you can uh, so you can read it. Leech. At the end of your turn, go ahead and deal 3 to a random sleeping enemy creature. Roar when this comes on the field, all creatures go to sleep. I don't know if you guys play Pokémon, but it reminds me of Darkrai. It would come on the board, put everything to sleep, and it had like a built-in dream eater kind of effect. So they're just running it up, man. Five hours ago, they must have woken up with the bug. Gold demo. Go ahead and get the gold. What is that? Uh, Alexis Akron Sword. Summon five two two acolytes. Give them front line. <whistles> That's a good card. And it's cheaper than some of the other cards. 819. That's not a bad deal. 876 for the Harvester. This is a really good card. When a creature dies, deal two damage to both gods. When your god takes the damage, heal your god for two. When your god is healed, this creature gets strength. Pretty nutty if you ask me. Diamond Thanatar, Gold Ashen Drake, another gold avatar of nature. 
What is this, Guardian of the Gates? Yes, it is. Gold. Unlock a mana lock. Give your war to the god. Man, so someone's balling out today. Went in ahead and bought the tea at two. I don't blame you, man. Nine mana. At Frank, flank, front line, twin streak, ward. I mean, what else did you forget on there? <laughs> and, uh, okay, we got the description. I don't have to zoom in anymore for you. We're just going to read it right here. Um, at the end of each turn, this creature gets ward. War, this creature gets plus two attack, plus one health for each card in your hand. Pretty nutty, if you ask me. Another gold, Ash and Drake. What is this? It says white something. Hey, it don't matter what it is. We just know people spending money on it. You know what I'm saying? $200 on that. And then it uh, looks like somebody was watching um, Dousing Blade or Devouring Blade. Blitz, afterlife, destroy a random creature. Somebody really wanted to drop that. Spent $2 on it and $1 on a uh, core card. After this creature attacks a creature, draw a card. Man, somebody spending a dollar and uh, 60 on gas and two dollars and another 60 on gas. Good for you, my guy. Hey, oh, we got some uh, Ashen Drakes running off the board. How many is that? Let's go count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You thought you was going to get one? <laughs> you better hurry up. Someone just bought 12 of them. Wow, for cheap, cheap. Hold up. Somebody got the homie hookup. Let's look at these prices. Seven ninety five, nine ninety four, seven ninety five, nine twenty eight, seven ninety five, eighteen, eighteen, eight forty three, six, sixteen, sixteen, eight. Man, where did you get that? Let's go ahead and take a look and see what Ash and Drakes are currently listed for. Oh, that's because we got it uh, set up. Let's go ahead and take it off of death. Commons. Go ahead and take it off of common. Ash and Drake. Seventy nine, sixty nine. And my guy bought them for about 20, under 20, 20 max. Wow, looks like a quick 3X. Hey, somebody wants a $2 car price with a $60 gas fee. Hey, man, shipping and handling uh, <laughs> extra, not included in the price. Somebody wanted to get some um, gold Jason, 1700 1800 They dropped their stimmy on it. I don't blame them. It looks nice, right? Somebody got a rolling watcher. Was that you, Caution? Diamond rolling watcher. That must have been one of the TST guys, right? At the start of each turn, this creature gets plus one strength. Not a bad uh, little opening. Not a bad little opening. And then to top it off, a little Hephaestus. And Osiris. All right, man. So let's go ahead and look at see how much money has been spent in the past 24 hours. We've had about 47 sales in the past day, another 20,000. Someone's buying cars out here in this lot. Just had a Corolla roll off. Average car price, about $437. Alrighty, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so uh, what you're here for, what's in the title, what we're about to break down. You guys want a shopping list? You guys are ready. You guys want to, to add some Genesis cards in Gore catalog, but you're like, man, what is good? What is out there? What is going to add value to to my um to my decks? Well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look. It might not be what you want, but it's uh what I'm going to recommend for you. How about that? Ready? Let's go ahead and start with the commons. Let's go ahead and uh, slide this over here. Y'all okay, can't really. It's kind of blocking the uh, whole screen, so let me let me shrink this up a little bit. We don't need a whole extra space. Oh. Text, we're just going to be putting in some names. Let's go ahead and toss this up. Oh, toss this up right. Yeah. Okay, so commons. Dangerous ritual, right off the bat, going to be the first card that we're looking at. Deal four damage to each god, draw a card. Definitely a better version of Brimstone. I definitely think you should cop it, 48 cents. If we're talking about minus gas fees, definitely worth it. Dangerous ritual. Definitely a good common. Let me shrink this up a little bit more since the page is a little smaller. Okay, dangerous ritual. Pretty good card. Worth the buy. Vile mantis destroy two other friendly creatures. This creature gets plus two three for each creature destroyed. Eh, it's cute. Sarcophagus, burn two, afterlife, summon a random Nubian from your void. I think it's good, man, if you can, 
go ahead and buy it if you have the Anubians and you want to run an Anubian cohesive deck. Is it on the tier list? No, really, it's cute. But is it going to break the bank? Nah. Reap, though. Destroy a target creature, heal your god for four. Definitely making it on the list. Literally has, if, if you've seen the equivalent to this, would be Disintegration Ray. Destroy a target, but deal two. This destroys the target. You do not take damage, but you heal for four for one more mana up. I think that's definitely a lot better. So let's go ahead and add Reap in there for the commons. And that'll be uh, about it for the commons in that side. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rares. Amazon Heart Eater. Definitely up in there. Okay, so the rares, it seems like, is where your money is going to be spent. Because there's going to be, there's a couple of these on here. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about Paul Bearer. Summon another random creature with afterlife from your void. Crucial. Half-life. Summon a creature with mana cost, three mana or less from your void. Give it Blitz and Soulless. Untold Greed. Destroy target friendly creature. Draw two cards. Ragnarok. Deal three damage to each god. Give burn three to each creature. Canopic Hoarder. Let me go ahead and scoot this over there so you can see it. And also Fanatic of Kinum. Fanatic, unlock a mana lock for both players. Canopic Hoarder. Select two different creatures in your void. Trigger their afterlife abilities. Amazon Heart Eater. Also the other one of these three on the top. Destroy a creature with three health or less. If you control another Amazon, heal your god for the destroyed creature's health. I mean, those cards don't get much better than that. <laughs> and that is going to do it for the rares. Let's go ahead and add this to the shopping list. And then let's go ahead and bust it down for some epics. So epics, we got about six total. Apocalypse now. Destroy all creatures. Destroy all creatures again. If they have ward, it'll go through ward. This hits twice. It does not count as the spell itself. It'll hit twice. If they have afterlife on any of their creatures, I don't know how many creatures summon three tiers of minions, but it'll destroy their creatures with afterlife. Go ahead and add that to your list. Apocalypse now and um, as we're gonna see soul burn getting a change and also a uh, unknown god power we can see if um, control uh, Control death will make its way up on the tier list of Domain deck types for that god and um, also secondary do demonic offering three mana destroy a target friendly creatures summon two random anims they gain the tribe nether those anims can either be a, I believe, two, two strength, two health with protected, either a three, two with hidden, a two, three with frontline, and just a random three, three, I believe, just straight up. So you can get four um, pretty good cards. So Fear of Grain doesn't make the list, but it's a good card. I'll read it off to you. One mana. Each creature gets burn plus two. Afterlife, draw a card. If you're doing a mill type thing, you can do something with that. And then for the goodness, the, the juicy, the juicy cards, let's go ahead and bust it down for the legendaries in the set. There's only going to be about two of them that really make it, at least in my opinion. And what they are, and they're honestly um, very, very uh, strong cards. I definitely highly recommend them. And that's going to be the Harvester, $85, and Avatar of Death. Both six mana. Harvester, whenever a creature dies, deal two damage to both gods. When your god takes damage, heal your god for two. When your god is healed, get strength. Really good card, Avatar of Death. This creature gets plus one strength for each point of damage your god takes. Afterlife, deal six damage to a random enemy creature. 
So yeah, pretty solid. Let's go ahead and add that on there. AOD, Avatar of Death, and the Harvester. And that's gonna do it for the Genesis set of recommended cards, in my opinion, for the Death Domain. Let me go ahead and back that up. Swing that over. Okay. And then next we have up Deception. So let's go ahead and get our Deception going. Let's go ahead and bust it down to the commons. Take that off. Go ahead and take Death off. And let's look at uh, what commons we have for Deception. They have a little bit more. <laughs> A little bit more on the common side, so let's go ahead and pull up our list. So one thing I've had the pleasure of playing up against, if you pip out and use this mana bind, or ancient curse, three mana out of mana bind to your opponent's hand, what it does is it will make them be one mana less, and then on three they have to play the card, so they are, if they're on turn two and you go first, and um, they get to turn three, they're going to have two mana, so they're going to have to use their bag to get rid of it then, or they get a busted turn, and then they go to turn four with three mana and have to play their Ancient Curse to get it out of their hand. So if you can get this off top, you really can slow them down pretty pretty nastily. Is that a word? Nastily, I guess? Feels, feels nasty saying it. Whether or not it makes the list of something you should buy, I don't know. Honorable mention, though, for sure. Common Sleep Dart. I don't know how many of y'all have come up against a Control Deception, but you do not have any Genesis cards, so you can't play any. Uh, you can't play that deck. Sleep Dart. Target creature goes to sleep. It gains burn three, two mana. If you get that at the start, not many creatures are gonna live through a turn taking three and then survive the next turn taking another three. Most of them are gonna be gone from that. So let's go ahead and add Sleep Dart to our list let's go ahead and add nightmare deal two damage to a creature if it's sleeping deal five damage instead what you see what you will see with the um genesis deception cards is they have um a little bit of cohesiveness with sleep and charm let's go ahead and add spellbound target two creatures they go to sleep for one mana it doesn't get much better than that and then another one one man or two mana lightfoot informant i'm typing all kinds of wrong lightfoot informant hidden for one turn roar add a copy of a random spell from your your opponent's deck to your hand pretty solid if you ask me and then that's gonna be about it. heads or tails this is a cute little card i'll go ahead and read it off to you randomly either both gods take four damage or just the opposing god takes three damage pretty nutty i've seen some people go off with this too me too three shuffle three copies of a creature into your opponent's deck but yeah so that's it uh for the comments let's go ahead and take a jump to the rares and see what we got Another thing common with the sleep. Let's go ahead and take a look at charm eight mana gain control of target enemy creature for one turn Give it God blitz look at your opponent's hand select any card pull it into your hand Man, that's a mouthful, but it's a uh... In other words if you <laughs> if you can't read all that what it says to me is value Pretty much in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and add charm to our shopping list shade walker. I'm skipping some I'm saying it is nasty. Let's go ahead and add Shade Walker. Four mana, four, three, hidden. At the end of your turn, this creature gets plus one strength. So, uh, I don't know if you guys have played with, um, what is that dude? The hidden dude, six, three, back line, little card. Well, this is, uh, Shade Walker. You can go ahead and hit. After your first turn, it's going to be 5-3. You go ahead and hit him. Go ahead and cheat it. It's going to be 6-2. Go ahead and hit him. Cheat it. It's going to be a 7-1. So, yeah, that's going to be the couple turns after you play that. Go ahead and add mugging to your shopping list. Target an enemy creature. Summon three 1-1 one -one rogue skulkers to attack the target. I don't know um, what the card name is in, um, in Hearthstone, but there is a very similar card that does the same. Go ahead and add mugging to the list, and uh, I think that'll do it for our rares. Let's go ahead and jump up to epics. Not really seeing much in here. Hollow Mirrors is cute. 
One dollar card, is it worth the buy, you tell me. Summon two O2 mirrors with front line, can attack. Creatures that attack a mirror become confused. It's cute. Is it is it scary? I don't know. Labyrinth Minotaur, good card, don't really see it running, but uh, roar, pick one, attack a target enemy creature, or gain hidden for one turn, six mana, four, seven, could be alright, definitely, um, depending on, you know what I mean, the state of the board. So the only card that really sticks out for Genesis, for the Deception Domain, Mimicus is good, not bad, but the real one, there's not really any epics if you see on this list. So we, um, not really any epics that are really worth getting off top. I mean, the rest of them you can kind of, you can kind of leave as is. But Avatar of Deception, pretty solid card, pretty good value. Four mana, four, four, hidden. Roar, when a, ra a roar, a random enemy creature becomes confused and goes to sleep. Uh, Master of Surprises isn't a bad card. It's a 6 mana, 8, 5, hidden at the end of your turn. Each creature has a 50% chance to swap its attack and health. Roar, swap the attack and health of each other creature. So, it's cute. Let's go ahead and add Avatar of Deception. And what you'll see, honestly, is all the Avatar cards that they made for each domain are very strong. And um, Avatar Deception is going to top it off for our Deception list. And then next up we have Light. Light has some very strong cards. Very strong. Let's go ahead and bust it down. Go ahead and take a look at it. Commons for Light. I know y'all have come up against it. The worst thing in the world is getting a Pyramid Warden played on you. Only to have it be canonized. Canonized. Five mana. Give a creature plus three, plus three, and protected. I mean, honestly, there's not any buffing spells that get better than that. If you are playing heal and you want a crazy heal deck, anoint. Double the health of a friendly creature. It gets pretty up there. There's some creatures that can definitely get very sticky, doubling their health. If you want to see a Lysander with doubled health, it starts off with seven. Gains health each time. <laughs> 14 health, Lysander, getting healed up. Two full at the start of every turn. I mean, I'm just... I'm getting my rustles... My, my jimmy's rustled up just thinking about it. Okay. Master of Indulgences. I'm pretty sure y'all have come across this card before. Four mana. Roar. This creature swaps health with another creature. It is 2-2. Two, two. They want to play out their big guys. No, no. It will take their health and give them two health in lieu of. Disgusting. Go ahead and add that to your shopping list. And if you got to put some stuff back to buy some stuff, Master of Indulgences is always going to be the card that you want to get. Reformation. Set a creature's strength to one and give it plus one health, one mana. Definitely go ahead and add that to the list. Is it a make or break? No, but it is definitely a card that's seeing more and more play at the high level. So let's go ahead and keep scrolling. Field Nurse is not bad. Is it a must buy? It's not. But one mana, one, two. At the end of each turn, heal two to a random friendly injured creature. Not too bad. Healing Insight. Another one mana is make the uh, make or break it. It does not, but give a friendly creature plus two health and fully heal it. Not too bad. I know you guys see it in the Sanctum as of right now. Inquisitor summons. Summon acolytes until you have as many creatures as your opponent, then give the acolytes front line. Definitely something that should make the list if you need something else to buy. 16 cents. It's pretty easy to get a playset. Pretty easy to up it if you want to... Um, I'm not even going to worry about spelling that correctly. Whatever. Inquisitor summons another one. The last one on the list. This one is a buy. Four mana. Two, three. Gentle Monk. Roar. Set an enemy creature's strength to one. So if you see from these Genesis commons, they are all about just scuffing up your opponent's minions. For free. For free. Go ahead and get that Gentle Monk in there. And then next, we will scoot on down to rares. 
rares. What do we see? Nothing really catching our eye. Somebody played this Pilgrim of the Cause the other day. Not really that great, but we can talk about it. 16 cents. Two mana, one, two, protected. Give the chosen one protected and move it to the front. Move it one card closer to the top of your deck. Chosen one isn't really getting a lot of play right now, but we could see with the new set coming up if it will get more cohesive cards. Scale of justice, something we're talking about. Is it worth a buy? Not really, but we can talk about it. One mana, select two creatures and evenly distribute their strength. They cannot attack gods this turn. Pretty good if you get to the late game, you have a little... You know what I mean? Card Shark, they have a Helion Elite. You just want to scuff them up a little bit. Not really anything worth grabbing in the rares. But the epics is why they tell you this. Three out of four epics are going to be worth you buying. One of the ones I'll talk about first off, my love, Highborn Knight. Four mana, three, three, frontline protected ward. I don't know a card with better value than that. Maybe... We could talk about Pyramid Warden, but I mean, that is a juicy card. And then you have Canonize right off the back of that. If you get a 4 into a 5, Highborn Knight, Frontline, Protected, Ward, 3-3, three, three. you get a Canonize after that. That is a 8-8. Eight, eight. If they did not touch it, that is a 8-8 eight, eight with Frontline, Protected, and Ward. Disgusting. Definitely go ahead and add on Highborn Knight. That is a must-buy. Seraph. <laughs> Frontline, five mana, protected afterlife. Set the attack of all enemy creatures to one. This has frontline. You have to hit it. And then after that, all your creatures attack will be at one. Disgusting. That is on par with a cursed Kapora. Definitely a really good card. Golden Harp. Definitely another disgusting card, better than Aetheric Alarm, which is in the current trial set, but this is way better. Three mana, three durability. At the end of your turn, summon a 1-1 one, one injured soldier with frontline. At the start of your opponent's turn, this heals all friendly creatures for one and loses one durability. Get a plus one heal across the board. And you get a 1-2 frontline. Pretty solid card, if you ask me. Definitely has some cohesiveness with um. Where is that one card that um you heal up and uh, they draw? I, it might be a neutral, so we might come back to that. If not, we'll dump through the list and take a look at it, because there is a card that goes hand in hand with that. Let's go ahead and look at the epics. So. Avatar of Light is one of the Avatar domains that isn't as strong when you read the card. It doesn't stick out like, whoa, this is crazy. Seven mana, frontline protected, fully heal all other friendly creatures. If you have a board, it is good. I think I like Helia from this current set of Trial of the Gods. Seven mana, six, six. Give each creature plus one attack and strength and also give them ward. I think Helia might be a little better, but... Uh I'm down for a debate on that if um, if you feel differently. Avatar of Light, it can make the list. It's not bad if you need some beef for your Avatar or your Light decks. <laughs> yeah, Helio is definitely good. It's definitely going to be on our shopping list for tomorrow. Osiris, we can, we've seen some crazy one card, one monster chosen one decks with this. After life, shuffle this creature into your deck and it keeps all buffs. This card can get pretty crazy. Griffith is also a good card. Protected, Ward, it is 7 mana. Roar, set the strength of all other creatures with strength 4 or more to 1. And it is a 6, 7. And then uh, Alexis, Akron, Sword. Summon 5, 2, 2, Acolytes and give them Frontline. So, out of the Leggies, um, let's go ahead and scoot over here to... Horus isn't too bad. At the end of your turn, another friendly creature with the highest health becomes protected. And then we have Light Ascended. Solus, give each friendly creature plus two health. Your god power becomes Shine. And I don't know about y'all, but when I see these cards, like especially um, the one for nature that gives you, or like a change your god power to a different one, I'm less inclined to play those cards because I don't know what Shine is. I don't know what these different god powers are that I'm switching to. So I don't want to switch to something I don't know of. But for this list, for the light, 
we are going to go with these four. Alexis, Avatar Light, we can get Griffith, and we can get Osiris. But the ones that you probably want to buy, Osiris is good. I would say it would go Osiris first, then either Griffith, then Alexis, then the Light. Would probably be the order of strength that I would go and get those into. Yeah, can anybody explain to me what we're doing right now? Right, right now, we're going through a shopping list for the Genesis uh, domains. I'm just going through the Genesis cards, and then we're going through which ones I would suggest you buying between commons, rares, epics, and legendaries. This is just my opinion, you know what I mean? Um, if you think that I'm missing some cards that you might want to buy, you know what I mean? Go ahead and add it to your list, but we're just going through making our shopping list. And, um, you know, just follow along. If you see something you like that uh, catches your eye, go ahead and, you know, mark it down on something you'd like. So let's go ahead and bust it down. We're done with the light. Let's go ahead and get into magic. There are some good commons. Look, we got a decent amount. For what purpose to resell later or to use in the deck for both? Um, mostly we're talking about getting a play set. So this is going to be uh, what you want to add to your deck. You know what I mean? Probably what you want to what you want to play with. Feel free. I mean, these are good cards that I'm recommending. So they'll probably be going up in value because it's um, they're pretty um, common staple cards. Pretty meta cards right now. So um, first one that makes the list is Dimension Door. Draw a card, reduce its mana cost by one if it costs less than your unlocked mana gems. With Ramp Magic, it is definitely a good card. You can go ahead and add that on there, Dimension Door. It's definitely, um, it's making it on less of the deck list, but when I first started, I definitely saw it included in um, a couple more of them. But as there's been more players, new players to come on, the decks have been um, a little bit more friendly. I feel like up in value, but will ultimately be less than the current cost plus gas fees. Yeah, definitely. Some of these will definitely be able to um, offsuit the gas fees and value if you buy them right now. But when you're talking about commons and rares, when the price of these cards are 16 cents and you're adding on another $60 in gas fees, you're definitely not. it's definitely not worth um, the resale if, that, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so next card up, Arcane Transcendent, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. Roar, choose a spell that costs no more than your total unlocked mana gems, reduce its cost by 2. Go ahead and add that to your list. And then, this is a nutty card, man, I've, I've had the pleasure of getting scuffed by it. Portal Wrangler, 4 mana, 3-4, Roar, add a copy of the last creature played to your hand. So turn 7, your... Opponent plays a Demogorgon. You don't have a Demogorgon. Ah, man. But you do have a Portal Wrangler. You slap down a Portal Wrangler. Now you have their Demogorgon, the last played card, into your hand. So say you do have a Demogorgon in your deck. You have two of them. You don't want to play your two. They just played theirs. You slap down. Now you have three total Demogorgons in your deck. So say... They, you played your Demogorgon, they passed, and they did not play anything because their board was slept. You play a Portal Wrangler, you get one for free. That's how that card works. It gets nutty. So go ahead and definitely add on a Portal Wrangler to your shopping list. Let's go ahead and add on a Warp Engineer. Choose a card that costs no more than your total unlocked mana gems. Reduce its cost by two. This is after Immutable X goes live or now. I mean, if you have the money to uh, buy all these cards now, plus the gas fees, go ahead and do it. But um, this, this, is, this is what our list is going to be when we're shopping come IMX. When we can get these cards for no fee, instant transmission. We can go ahead and add that. We can add on Recursion. Recursion isn't, you know, a must-buy, but definitely a good spell. Two mana, add two copies of a random spell from your opponent's void to your hand. We can go ahead and add that on there. Why not? Recursion. Um, so Aether Magic is a good, good archetype for magic. Dimension Looper. Roar. Deal one damage. If you're holding an Aether, deal three damage instead. I'm going to add it to my list because I'm interested in playing Aether Magic. But if you are not, you don't have to buy it. One card that I would highly recommend buying, Shadow Scryer. Protected, Ward at the start of your turn, 4C1. Really good card. Probably about the best value you can get off of 1-1. One, one. And one of the best openings you can do as well. 
Levitate, remove front line, back line from target creature dollar card. Not really a must buy. Runic Familiar, I've uh, seen some deck lists. This gets pretty nutty. Two mana. Whenever you cast a spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one. So, you know, not, not a must buy, but you can definitely get nutty with it if you want to add it to your repertoire. Flying Carpet, one mana, three, one roar. This creature gets ward or four C one. Not a must buy, but definitely an interesting card to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and get to the rares. Crystalix. Five mana, three, four. Unlock a mana lock. Pretty good card. Must buy. Not really a must buy, but this is a must buy. Ancient text. Pick one. Roar. Deal two damage. Or a friendly creature becomes protected. That's going to be a add to my list. Ancient text. Faraday Cage. Another good one for the clear. Target a creature, deal two damage to every other creature. Definitely strong. When uh, we're speaking of zoo decks and etc., you have a anything that does a spell boost that is three across the board. A mini uh, asteric implosion. Magic Inks, a cute card. Cr uh, create a base copy of the lowest cost spell in your hand. Not really a must buy, but it's pretty solid. And then that'll do it for the rares. Let's go ahead and jump into the epics. Couple good epics in here. Archimedes Mirror. Any damage taken this creature is also applied to each enemy creature. Pretty nutty. Pretty hard to clear the board if your opponent goes wide. They will have to deal at least six damage, and that six damage will go across to their board as well. Mirror. Also another good card to have in your repertoire. Copy the lowest cost creature in your hand. It can get pretty clear, pretty nutty if you just have. Say just one Helian Elite, or you know what I mean? One just meaty card, you can clone that card for free. Lost in the Depths, I've seen people pop off. It's got some cohesiveness. Target a creature, obliterate cards in your deck with the same cost as that creature. Draw a card. So if you're looking to mill and you're looking to get you know, a, certain, a certain card, uh, it definitely helps you do so. Um, and then let's go ahead and get to the legendaries. Legendaries were very strong in this past set. One card that you guys, I don't know if you've had the pleasure of running into, Avatar of Magic. Protected, ward, spell boost, plus two. Whenever you cast a spell, add a copy of Beam to your hand that costs one mana. Go ahead and add that to your list. Guardian of the Gates, you saw this guy buying gold copies of these earlier. Roar, unlock a mana lock, give ward to your god, three mana. Pretty good card when we're talking about ramp being so dominant on the ladder. Cersei, Vengeful Sorceress, Roar, seven mana, three, three, deal three damage to each enemy creature. <laughs> the Palace Diamond, yeah, is uh, definitely a card that you wouldn't want to buy. Um, seven mana, three, three, Roar, deal three damage to each enemy character that also hits gods in four, four C3 cards. Threes across the board, definitely a strong card. Now, do I think this card, uh, $71, is going to be eventually $130 if we're talking about plus gas fees? I think you could, I think you could make your money back on that. Uh, for sure. Merlin, I don't really see it getting played, but I see it. Uh, it's a pretty cute card. At the end of your turn, reduce by one the cost of spells in your hand that cost less than the total unlocked mana gems. Pretty nutty. And that'll do it for magic. We have three more domains left. Nature, War, and Neutral. Let's go ahead and take a look at Nature. Nature's got some good cards in here. Nature's got some good... Um, some good across the board. Let's go ahead and take off Legendary. Agrador Protector starting us off right off the bat. Four mana, three, five, frontline, region one. If you see, there is a core card that is five mana, three, or uh, five strength, three, defense that has region one. That is also four, but it doesn't have frontline. I would say the swap around having more health with the frontline, I think Agrador is definitely a better card. A little bit more sticky, and that's what you want, especially when you're trying to develop the board early. You know, it's really what it's all about. Druidic Summons, I don't see a lot of people running it, but it is good when you get it out of Forge. 
Black Rhino is going to be a uh, creme de la creme card. Definitely something that you're going to want to add to your repertoire. Black Rhino is a six mana confused roar pick one. This creature gets either plus two strength and twin strike, making it a seven five. Or it gets plus three health in front line, making it a five eight for six mana. Definitely one of the strong cards in the set. Just those two cards alone added to your repertoire will make your nature deck a lot stronger. Let's go ahead and bump up to the rares. Underbrush Boar. Confused. Two mana at the end of your turn. Underbrush Boar is summoned. Attack a random creature. So you get a 3-3 that's going to attack off top the first turn you play it. That is a very strong card because it has a very um, heavy presence the moment it touches the board. Murto's Daughter. Also a decent 5 mana card. Whether it's a must buy, debatable. 5 mana Blitz, Roar pick 1, this creature gets plus 2, plus 2, making it a 5 mana 4-4 four, four with Blitz. Or another random friendly Amazon gets plus 4, plus 3, making it a 2-2 two, two with Blitz, with a buff. Not too bad. Revenant Lynx is going to be something that you're going to want to add. 3 mana, 4-2, Confused, Roar, plus 2 mana. So, pretty easy to pop off with. On the turn it's played because you can keep the chain going with that plus two mana and decent stats as well on board. These other ones aren't really must buys but different decent cards. I'll let you guys go ahead and take a look at the rares in the set. Not really much worth me actually saying. Gloam Druid. I don't know how many of y'all have seen how many confused creatures there are in the nature domain. But Gloam Druid, two mana, two two. Roar your confused creatures get plus two strength. That is a kill shot, a better version of... Fire wine or easily more easily accessible version of fire wine to pop off a combo. Go ahead and add Gloam Druid on there. Pretty sexy card if you ask me. And that'll do it for the epics. Let's go ahead and peep on the leggies. So legendaries. Let's go ahead and add on Avatar of Nature. As you've seen and as I've been saying, the Avatar cards from this set are very strong. Avatar of Nature, five mana, five five. At the end of your turn, go ahead and summon a one one walking plant. Walking plant, boar and rhino. I would say between the boar or the black rhino, I would say the rhino, because I you can substitute the boar in your deck for a black jaguar. Granted, it does not have the attack at the end of your turn it's played but it does still have the same stat line same um same wild it's a little bit easily more easily to sub in than the black rhino which i mean there are other options the green giant which is a 6 eight over overkill or the um dionysian bull which is just from this trial set which is a three mana seven front line region four those are all subs, uh, potential options to sub in for six mana in lieu of the Black Rhino, but there's not that those stat lines don't be a five eight with front line. The closest you can get is that Green Giant. Um, so yeah, Avatar of Nature definitely up there on the um, legendaries. Uh, Hi Hippolyta divided. Um, it is a six mana. Four, five, roar, pick one. This creature gets either plus one, plus four, or it becomes an Olympian, Blitz, Protected, and Amazon. Oh, it is a plus one, plus four, and Olympian, or it becomes Blitz, Protected, and Amazon. So if you're looking for Amazon cohesiveness, it has that for you. If you're looking for it to come out and be a big body on board, it has that for you as well. And then the last card that um, you don't really have to have to buy it, but it is a decent card worth saying. Sacella, at the end of your turn, each other friendly creature gains plus two, plus two, and becomes confused. If that sticks on the board, that is a very good card. Constantly buffing your creatures plus two, plus two. I'm not going to add it to the list, but um, definitely something worth noting. And then let's go ahead and jump on to War. War has a couple of um, cohesive cards. Whether or not they're like very strong on their own is a little different. But um, together, you know what I mean? Together, they are very strong. So let's go ahead and bust it down with the commons. First off, we're going to talk about Sharpen. What you will see is outside of Genesis for War, there aren't many Relic buff cards or like, you know what I mean? Very strong Relic buff cards. There are some, but these are the better ones. And the um, other ones that are in the 
core sets or well core are kind of epic cards, which do make them a little bit harder to have access to as well, given um, if you are a starting player. So let's go ahead and take a look at Sharpen. Two mana, give plus three strength to your relic and to a target friendly creature for their next attack. That is a lot of damage off top. Six damage coming from the hand for two mana. Um, that could be a kill shot. You know what I mean? Something that they definitely weren't um, expecting. Uh, Hycosian Chariot. Three mana, Blitz, Flank Protected, 2-1. Not really a major buy, but could be something. Blood Rage, give a damage friendly creature, plus four, plus two. A good card, not really a must buy. This one's going to be a pretty good card, though. Uh, something I will recommend. Odin's White Raven. Delve a Viking, put it into your hand. Um, with Valka's Axe and other Viking buff cards, that could be a very good, um, very good card to cop into so we'll go ahead and add that as a uh, common let's go ahead and jump into the rares bast claws is it a must buy not really but god blitz whenever you're, you attack give plus one plus one to a random creature in your hand six mana three four pretty decent one card, two cards, though, that will make the list. I don't know if you've seen Copper playing his um, big-ass dragon deck. Mountain Grey Worm is going to be the main uh, win condition off that deck. Whenever this creature takes damage, double its strength. You can get it up there to, like, about 20 pretty quickly. Double it once, you got 8. Double it again, you got 16. You can If, if you can damage it three times, you got a 24. 24-9. Or 24-6. So go ahead and add Mountain Grey Worm, 48 cents, pretty easy to add into your repertoire. Not really a lot of dragon cards, um, hopefully they do add a couple more dragon cards in this next set to get a little bit more cohesiveness with dragons because we have Dragon King Caller in this previous set of Trial of the Gods. Um, the other rare, Master Tactician, protected, 2-2, two, two. all other friendly creatures gain flank until the end of the turn. Pretty good, um, that's what he means by bad, yeah, <laughs> big ass dragon deck. That's what bad means. Okay, let's go ahead and add in Master Tactician. Um, let's go ahead and take a peek at the epics. Okay, so for epics, let's go ahead and add on Scythe of the Harvest. God Blitz Roar give plus one strength to a friendly enemy to a friendly creature. Four mana, four two. Um, probably about the strongest card that you can get early on because the other five mana cards are going to be or five damage cards are going to be up at uh eight mana and that is either the uh avatar of war or your um aries rune blade so for epics uh scythe of the harvest is definitely a really strong card definitely recommended for those of you who like playing slayer and um who like uh you know weaponing up um respected yarl Blitz, War, give a friendly damage creature, twin strike, plus one strength. Definitely a good card. Whether or not it's um, a must-buy, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how the meta changes and um, what we're looking at coming up into IMX. Um, but we'll, we'll add it to the list. And then Furies. Um, this is pretty good. Co uh, Olympian Cohesiveness. Roar, summon two Furies. If there are six or more Olympians in your void, your Furies gain plus one strength and Blitz. Um, it's pretty easy to get there if you have Parthenes. Um... Like Parthenon's Democracy, I think. It's a one mana, uh, or two mana, one one that summons a copy of itself. That's two Olympians right there. You summon, you play two of those, that's four Olympians in the void. Two Shield Bearers, that's six. So it's pretty easy to get there. Um, you can go ahead and add that to your list. I played against it yesterday. It's a pretty good card. Um, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the Leggies. Okay, so man, uh, these are all pretty strong. I would um I definitely say definitely buy Avatar of War. I've said it's um I've said what it does, but I'm gonna say it again. Eight mana, eight eight with Leech, Roar out of five, two Cynthia Flame Blades with God Blitz after you attack, you heal your god for five. Doesn't get much better than that. It's basically a Ares Rune Blade with legs. Hephaestus is good if you're playing an Olympian based deck. Equipment enchanted weapon if you have three Olympians in your void. Whether or not it's a must buy, debatable. Uh, Aeneas or Anus, three, six mana, three, three, blitz, twin strike, protected at the end of your turn, this creature becomes protected. Hey, Tune2K, what is up, man? Appreciate you with the follow. And then we have Tear the Just. 
Pretty cheap card, 7 mana, 5, 9. After this, it takes damage, it gets 5 strength. I think this is a good card. I think it's at a cheap price. Um, so I definitely um, am recommending you add it to your list. There's not really a lot, a heavy supply of them. So, I mean, it, it could be a come up later on if more people get into it. Have to get back to work, but saw your uh, announcement on the TFC. Hey, appreciate you pulling up. Do you have VODs on your channel? Yes, I do. I'm going to be clipping this as well. So you guys, if you missed it, you can go ahead and uh, watch this. Um, so yeah, go ahead and add in uh, Aeneas to your list. Avatar of War. And if you want to if you want to add it on, you can go ahead and add on uh, Tear the Just. So um, yeah, that's uh, that'll do that. Main card that you want to buy for Leggies on Core for... Dumb, um, if you want to buy one... Of anything for war, buy Avatar of War, man. That'll make your late game get ten times better. And then um, popping it off. Hold up, mini clipper. Hey, dabbing it up, baby. Appreciate you, um, appreciate appreciate you with the follow. What is good, my guy? We're just making our Genesis shopping list right now. All right, so then we are going to get to the neutrals. There's a lot of good neutrals in here, man. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and add this. Uh, list is going to get pretty long here with the neutrals. So let's go ahead and add in. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up because we're coming up on an hour. Let's go ahead and speed this up. I'm going to say get Nimble Pixie. 48 cents. One mana, one, one flank. Add in another Nimble Pixie. One mana, one, one. Pretty much like Card Shark. Pretty good if you're trying to get some board going. If you play like Enrage or things like that. Rolling Watcher for all my TST guys out there. Rolling Watcher. Cute little card. Uh, two mana, zero, three. At the start of each turn, this creature gets plus one strength. It gets pretty crazy. Get out of hand pretty fast. Go ahead and add that on there. Another, um, relic removal. Two mana, two, two. Roar. Remove three durability from your opponent's relic. Pretty good. Weapon removal. Pretty low cost. Um, kind of beats out the Vart Basilisk. I guess not in stats, but in durability removal and for the cost to do so. You can go ahead and add that on there as something you want to get into your play set. It's a neutral, um, something you can slide into any deck. Um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Inflammable Imbecile. One mana, two, four, burn one. Um, so pretty much a one mana, two, three. Um, pretty solid, not too bad. We can go ahead and add that to the list of um, some bodies that we you know, want to add in, some neutrals. Um, we can talk about Dread, Pri Dread Pirate. Two mana, two two roar. Give a creature plus one, minus one. Not too bad. You can go ahead and ping something if it's um just got one health. Whether or not it's a must buy, that's up to you. It's a pretty cheap card. It's eight cents, so you don't have to get it. Um, if you want some Anubian cohesiveness, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the card Tuntunkamen, but it's pretty good. Bonded warrior, summon a one one skeleton. Two mana, two two. Uh, so two mana, three three, pretty much. Sphinx Cat, 4 mana, 3, 2, summon 2, 1, 1. So 4 mana, 5, 4. Not too bad. Pretty common stats, though, so it's nothing too crazy. Fool Hardy Berserker, at the, uh, after this creature deals damage, give a random friendly Viking plus 2 strength. Pretty strong card. Um, nothing too crazy. One card I will recommend that is a neutral, Rebirth Planetar, for those of you who want to play some Aethers. At the end of your turn, add a random Aether to your Void to your hand. One part, one card that I saw somebody play was this, and like I think um, the core card that is a 7 mana, 7, 7 Aether, add an Aether to your hand. If you just play those two cards, you can keep bringing back a 7 mana, 7, 7, or a 6, 7. It gets pretty nutty. Um, you can go ahead and add that to your shopping list if you want. Not really something that you have to buy. Feel it tracker though. For those of you who like to get a little nutty a little fast. Two mana, five, one. Um, you know, pretty easily pinged off the board, but a pretty strong card if it sticks. Commons wasn't too crazy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rares. One card that I think is slept on. I haven't seen a lot of people play, but I definitely want to get jiggy with it. Rock, Drake, Egg. Burn two, cannot attack. After life, if you have six cards or more in your hand, summon a 6-5 Rock Drake. I think that's pretty cool if you can do that three turns, two mana. I think you can definitely get a little nutty. Get a little nutty with that. Okay, so uh, neutral card I will recommend, Trojan Golem. I've seen some people pop off with this. 
front line, two mana, two one. After life, summon a one mana one or summon a one one injured soldier with front line. So kind of a body that you can put on. Swashbuckler, um, twin strike, deal one damage off a of ping. So it's like a better Athenian archer. You can go ahead and add that to your list. Devouring Golem, I've seen people pop off with some Atlantean cohesiveness. Twin Strike, at the start of your turn, this creature destroys a random other friendly Atlantean, gets 3-3. Three, three. So that is a 7-8 for 5 mana if you have an Atlantean to toss up. This creature, 1 mana Broken Harvester, another Atlantean. For some Atlantean cohesiveness, at the start of your turn, this creature attacks a random valid target. 1 mana, 1-5. One the Goat of the Neutral Cards Pyramid Warden. You can go ahead and add that on there to your shopping list. That is a must-buy. Friendly Mimic, add a copy of a friendly creature to your hand. Friendly Mimic is a must-buy. Spiral Golem, at the start of your turn, this creature attacks a random enemy, random enemy creature. 8-10. Pixie Lock, at the end of your turn, summon a 1-1 one, one Nimble Pixie. Pixie Lock is a good card to add on there. Golem Centurion, a good card to add. Soul Jar, a good card to add. What legendary neutrals are there? Okay, so they got a couple that I will tell you to buy. Hercules is a good card to buy. 7 mana, 6, 7. Frontline protected. Your other Olympians get 2-2. Two, two. Tiet, um, good card to buy. Jason, good card to buy for a neutral. Sky Reaver, after an Aether attacks, draw a card. 5 mana card. Good card to add on. We'll take a look at the epics, but pretty much we should be. Expected Chicken, good card to add. Demogorgon, good card to buy, of course. Ashen Drake, good card to buy. Deathwish Danatar, good card to add. And yeah. Wraith Zealot isn't bad either, man. I've gotten scuffed with a Wraith Zealot. Seven mana, one four, deadly frontline roar, summon another. Wraith Zealot. So for seven mana, you put out a 2 8 deadly front line. Pretty solid card. But yeah, man. Woo. That was a mouthful. That was a long one. Go ahead and stretch it out. Shopping list should be good to go, man. We, we, we burned through those neutrals, but yeah, other than that, man, um, we, 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 I think you guys should be pretty set once um, Genesis is able to uh, pop on. Yeah, great shopping list. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, man. Woo. Buy all in Diamond A, man. So hopefully this gives you some food for thought on what you want to buy, how you want to set yourself up. Now that you've made your list, now that you've seen what's hot, what I like, what's meta, you can um, go ahead and see, you know, get your budget right. Go ahead and look at those prices on how much those cards are going to be. And, you know, go ahead and um, see where you wanna, what you want to do with that. Um, tomorrow's episode, we're going to be doing the same thing, but for the Trials cards. Um, and then maybe on the second episode, we can go ahead and look at scarcity and supply of those cards. Because uh, we can see all that with the blockchain, baby. But yeah, thank you guys for uh, tuning in to episode 3 of Market Watch. Um, yeah, tune in tomorrow where we're going to be talking about Trials of the Gods cards. Making a little shopping list again, because that is coming up very soon. But I am um, Black Gaston, your host for Market Watch. Have a great evening, stay beautiful, stay sexy. Oh, I got my whole my whole camera in the back. Hold up. Hey, we gonna have to we gonna have to we gonna have to.